Hey everybody, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I am going to be giving my feedback slash criticisms on the Back for Blood Alpha. I played the whole entire weekend, I played it all the way through, and I very thoroughly enjoyed this alpha. I want to just let you guys know straight off the rip that this is not a rant, this is not a overall negative video there will be positive stuff included but of course human beings like a little bit of drama every now and again so i will be including some negative stuff in the video just because it is needed and there is some constructive criticism and it's definitely as well so do not worry i will be not necessarily just k kissing turtle rock studios butt here but i will try to be matter of fact fit and not try to roast them now, Turtle Rock, I would like to hope that you were watching this video because you said that you are open to feedback and you are wanting people to submit stuff to the one link from your survey that pops up every single time that you close the application on your computer. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be linking this video to your guys's feedback page and I want to be able to end up explaining it in the form of a video just because it's not something that I can just simply type. So, just want to let you know that as well, Turtle Rock. And Turtle Rock, by the way, just so you know, this is constructive criticism. Uh, if I say anything that might sound, you know, mean or anything, just know that it just comes from a very dedicated fan who's loved the you know, Left 4 Dead franchise for so long. And it's not 100% too serious. I'm just kind of memeing around it a little bit as well. But uh, yes, guys, before we do begin with this video, as always, I tremendously appreciate if you guys could show your support on today's video by dropping a like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, sell me your firstborn child, give me your soul, all that wonderful stuff, because that's the way that YouTube works. And uh, yeah, basically it's a way that you can tell YouTube you want to see more videos like this. You could be like, hey YouTube, we'd like this guy. Uh, recommend this content to us. That way YouTube will be like, oh yeah, they do like his content. And but basically what happens is that YouTube is just like, oh hey, since people like this guy's content, we'll recommend it to him. And that if there's anybody that's looking for Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood content, because I was one of the few that got into the alpha, and is just also posting Left 4 Dead in general, people will find me and I can give them all the spicy content they are looking for. So, I'd be more than happy to provide you guys with the content you're looking for, you just gotta let me know. But anyways guys, enough with the normal YouTube stick, and enough with uh, my address to Turtle Rock. Let's get on with the review. So, just so you guys are aware, I'm doing all constructive criticism at the beginning, and then all positive stuff at the end. Because I feel like, if anything, it's gonna be more important to get that out of the way because that's when people are paying the most attention. So what I'll do is I'll get the constructive criticism out of the way all at once, and then we will be doing the stuff that I did like, but it's still constructive nonetheless. Alrighty, so the very first thing that I have to talk about is the glitches. This game on the alpha stage was very, very promising. It had little to no glitches except for a few, but unfortunately, these select few that I experienced were pretty dang insane, so... These glitches that I experienced, uh, that are, but are not limited to, uh, infected teleporting around corners and teleporting after players. Walls, ow, apparently I'm too close to that still. Boomer's the fucking wild coyote from the Looney Tunes! Infected teleporting through walls and getting into the safe room even though the door has been shut. T teammates looking like they're dead on the screen, which by that I mean that the health bar on the left, if the teammate downs or d dies, it's not displaying properly, so it looks like they're either downed or dead when they're not. And then the melee weapon's not registering properly. And also as well... The fact that mics were not working. This is something that I only experienced on the last day here tonight from when I'm recording this video. Uh, literally as soon as I got online, uh, from 6 o'clock onwards, there was no microphones working. Nobody could communicate with each other. I pushed press to talk and it just would not work. And I thought it was just personally me. I thought my headset or my microphone died, but no. I had other players that were experiencing as well. And so unfortunately that left us the typing. And some people don't even speak English sometimes when I'm in my lobbies, so trying to type English is not necessarily the best. So, 
that's the one glitch that I'm mostly concerned about, despite everything. It's it's one thing to have glitches like such as the the wall breach and the infected, you know, not working, etc. That's expected, but just flat out not being able to communicate with your teammates is scary, because this is a very cooperative team game. If you do not cooperate with your team, you're essentially going to be taking a massive risk almost like 99.9% .9 of the time, and it's just not worth it. So that one is definitely very much important. In fact, I'm probably going to be showing gameplay, if uh, not now, but uh, before when I was listing off everything, just because I have footage of examples of all these glitches taking place. But uh, yeah, these glitches are something that needs to be very much fixed, because if the alpha is anything to prove... The alpha is promising, but it's definitely not ready for a full-blown release, and we do not need to do a cyberpunk with this game. So, please take care of the glitches. That is just some of the uh, glitches that I experienced, but you guys may have experienced some of your own as well. The glitches in this game are not prevalent all the time, but when they are, it's very much annoying, and it gets in the way a lot of the time, and I just don't like them personally. Alright. The next thing I want to go over is the difficulty of the game. I know that as Left 4 Dead players have evolved and we have gotten a lot better at the game, but essentially, yes, we need a little bit of a challenge. But oh my god, this game is extremely difficult. Even for somebody like me who's played Left 4 Dead for so long. I was playing the game on all difficulties because I didn't want to end up just playing one difficulty and saying that's the case for all difficulties. I know some people are a lot more hardcore than others and I've been trying to expand my horizons on the amount of stuff that I play in my games instead of just limiting myself. And personally for me, the difficulties of the game need to be scaled back a lot, especially the last two. I have beaten the game only six or seven times throughout the whole entire weekend. That was because I was doing a mixture of trying to beat the campaign in general on all the modes, and also just doing my own fair bit of messing around. Because there was only one game mode, it's just playing this, the just default campaign on the one mission. Now, the thing is with the difficulty, right? The difficulty is not just specifically related to one thing. I'm not saying just nerf or buff one thing and then bam, the game is automatically easier. I'm also not saying make the game extremely easy where it gets boring. I am saying that there's a thin line that we need to end up meeting, otherwise we're going to be struggling on this game, because it's either going to be too sweaty, and it's going to be very, very frustrating, or it's going to be too easy, and it's going to get boring. So, eventually, later on with my uh, topics here, I'm going to be re uh, recommending some stuff, and this is going to tie in back to the difficulty section, because the things I'm about to mention here in a little bit... If they were changed, if they were buffed or nerfed in this regard, it would make the game a lot easier. I would say that overall, the very first difficulty, just the classic mode, that one is honestly the most fun and the most fair. Especially considering the fact that the other two are just just solely ridiculous. Um, but I, I think the first game mode is fine, left the way it is. I don't necessarily think that should be considered the easiest mode though, however. Because unfortunately... The easiest mode in this game is like the hardest mode in Left 4 Dead 2, essentially. The easy mode in uh, Back 4 Blood is to Left 4 Dead 2 as advanced mode. And I would say that the other game modes, the next one, which is going to be uh, Survivor compared to Classic, that is uh, like expert mode in this game for Left 4 Dead 2 relation. And then the last one is just so impossible without a team that's good that it basically is like impossible mode. So... The game modes definitely need scaling readjustments in, in terms of a lot of stuff, and I just wanted to point that out right away. So, Turtle Rock, please keep your ears peeled, because I will be going over what I believe is some of the ways you can make the game a lot easier in this regard. Alright, the next thing that I want to end up going over is the map. Now, I'm not specifically saying that it is the whole entire map. It is just one chapter of the map, and that is Chapter 2. Chapter 2 of this map is very, very, very difficult and almost not fun. I like the second chapter when it's on easy mode, because on easy mode, like I said, easy mode in this game is like advanced mode on Left 4 Dead 2. But playing the second chapter on the other difficulties is like playing it on expert or borderline impossible mode, as I like to say. Because the second chapter, as soon as you end up starting, is automatically very difficult. 
you will see gameplay of the second chapter here in a little bit in this video because I'm not going to just do one necessarily uh, necessarily gameplay. I'm going to actually be showing all the stuff that I'm describing throughout the video. So you will in turn see a chapter two gameplay here in a second. But basically, chapter two, the way that it ends up starting out, you start off in a kind of like a foresty section of like a highway, right? And then as soon as you end up uh, re meeting your first tank, well, actually, I wouldn't even say that. I would just say since the moment you open the door, like the like the literal moment you open the door, zombies are almost right on top of you because they can jump and they do a, like extreme amounts of damage and they're very fast in this game. And unfortunately, what happens is that once you jump down, the long line of sight of all the zombies that are on that piece of that road it's very hard to tell which zombies are which, and so I kind of end up just shooting at everything, and I in turn end up summoning hordes, or I end up getting ambushed. And since it's also just a straight line, the only path is through, so I have to take damage trying to get to the checkpoint so I can start to take other paths. And then we have the tank or the ogre. The tank or the ogre always spawns in at the very beginning of the second chapter. And this guy you have to outrun, because essentially shooting him is a death sentence. He is essentially a, a a witch in this regard. You avoid him at all costs and only shoot if you have to. Unfortunately, what leads to this is that when you go into this tunnel of the second chapter, the tunnel is so claustrophobic that I don't even have claustrophobia and I'm getting claustrophobia. Claustrophobic is an understatement to describe this tunnel. This tunnel is dark. This tunnel is not loose at all. It's very cluttered. It's very, very, it's just horribly laid out. It feels like I'm playing like a Call of Duty ghost map where there's just so many flank routes for the zombies to hit me. And it's so narrow and it's so long. And I can't seem to manage to get through sometimes these zombies because they're constantly rushing me in such a bad line of sight. And there's even some nooks and crannies on the tunnel that I didn't even know the zombies could get me from until it was too late. It was very, very difficult to survive the second chapter if you didn't know what you were doing. Especially when you were playing it on the harder difficulties because it's just so narrow and dark and frustrating. The second chapter is not good except for the very, very end when you actually get out of the tunnel and then you're at the safe room. The second chapter needs a rework, very, very much so. I'm not saying change the whole entire map, but for example, one of the things that you could easily do is put more loot in the tunnel so you don't have to worry about struggling on loot as it is. Make it so that way there's less crap that uh, is in your way blocking you from being able to do a little bit of training almost. Like, I should be able to run around the zombies and not have to just do the path of least resistance, you know, and just struggle the whole entire way through. And I also shouldn't have to worry about zombies flanking me 24-7, especially in this room in particular right here. As soon as you end up getting into that little door from the trailer, right where the tank is uh, able to grab you for the first time by sticking his arm in, this room is the worst room in the whole entire game. I swear to god, you get in here, the tank is on the one end, so you cannot leave, but then there's a whole bunch of other infected that always seem to either be already in the room, or they're about to end up being on the other side of that door. And so you're trapped in a box that you cannot move in. And it's very difficult and very frustrating. It's an understatement to say how difficult this map is, especially on this section. I really do not like the second chapter of the map. The first chapter, the third chapter, and the finale. All completely acceptable. I really, really like all the other chapters. But the second one in particular, oh my god, is horrible. It is the equivalent of reminding me of Hard Rain back on the fourth chapter, or even the third chapter, when there's so much rain that you can't see anything, and you have to backtrack and you get lost. That is how bad the second chapter is, in my humble opinion. It's not... It's not something that I feel like is unmanageable, but I'm very worried that it's something that can't be fixed just because it looks already so finalized and detailed. That's just my main concern. But yes, the second chapter really needs a rework. Please look into a Turtle Rock. Alright, the next thing I'm going to be going over is the lack of loot. The lack of loot in this game is very prominent. Now, I will admit that they do give you a variety of ways to end up finding loot, in fact, even just giving you flat-out loot, such as the fact that there's the deck of cards that are in the game now, or in this case, the decks, which allow you to be able to have things such as spawn primary weapons, or even the characters, which give you a signature weapons as well. And you can also end up using the toolkit, which will allow you to end up unlocking special doors, which will allow you to be able to get exclusive loot in those rooms that usually are abundant and stuff, such as guns, ammo, perks, 
uh, attachments, health, cards, etc. Pretty much everything. But the thing is, though, is that unfortunately going into my next thing, which makes the toolkit and also just the characters still make it where we struggle on loot, is the lack of copper, first of all, and also just the character balance. So let's talk about these individually. Let's talk about the copper first. The copper, in this case, is the looting system or the economic system of Back for Blood. So in Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, you just found loot everywhere. You found guns, you found equipment, you found your health kits, and there were some rooms that were better than others. You sometimes found special ammo boxes or health boxes or even rooms, or even sometimes there was infected wearing gear. In this game, one of the things that they tried to do was make a equipment piece called the toolkit, which allows you to be able to go up to locked doors and get a crap ton of loot, kind of like a uh, like a grand looting room, if you would say. The problem is, though, is that the lack of copper, which is the currency in this game that allows you to be able to buy stuff from the workbench, which is now in this game, unfortunately, the lack of copper, and just also teammates not sharing copper with you sometimes, when this is a very team cooperative game, makes it so that way you can't ever have access to that thing as much as you would need it. And it makes it very, very frustrating, in my, in my opinion, and I think it honestly should be changed, because it just doesn't seem to be worth it. Alright, now this is going to be a big one for me, because this this is one of the things I'm scared of most of all when the game ends up coming out, because considering the way that games are nowadays, but this is going to end up being character comp. I'm not going to get into about whether or not the characters have likable personality traits, or whether or not people want to play a certain character because it's their main, or yada yada yada. I'm talking about just in general how the characters are balanced. I honestly think that for what the game was in the alpha, where there was only four characters, it works well. I think that the fact that we have Holly and Walker and Hoffman and uh, Evan Angelo, I think that th them as a crew is definitely a very balanced crew in terms of the way that they're likable and also just even their kits with their special weapons and their abilities and stuff like that. The one thing I'm worried about is the game's full release because on the alpha, you can see silhouettes of four additional characters, and they already announced this on their Twitter, but there's going to be four other characters that are going to be coming into the game later on, and one of them was already announced called Mom. Now, the thing is, though, is that depending on the way the characters are balanced in this game, I am very much worried that if they, for example, like, let's say, instead of having, like, a the designated crew of four per map, and they're only applied to those maps, and there's no crossing the characters over... Like, for example, let's say the new mom character can be swapped out for one of the four that are already on the alpha, and you, you can have something that's different from the original four crew. That's the one thing I'm worried about, because people such as, uh, you know, the, the one-trickers, as you would say, or the people that are just stubborn, as I like to call them, the people that have character bias, I feel like are going to very much cause problems in this game because of that. I'm worried that's going to get to the point where it might be like the equivalent of Overwatch or Rainbow, where there's a character selection option in the game and people either don't want to get off of a character for X, Y, and Z reason, or there's just significantly better characters than others. It's not even a matter of if they are likable anymore, it's just a matter of what's meta or not. And I, and I say meta in a mocking way, it's because I like having my games be simple. I like a competitiveness in my games, yes. But I don't like being so uberly anal about it that it just gets to the point where it feels like I'm actually play, playing a professional match. I never have wanted to end up going pro to the, the degree that Scump or anybody else has. I mean, sure, I might end up doing, like, you know, a, a comp online, or uh, I might end up doing, like, tournaments, like, on the small scale, but I would never see myself, at least right now, at this given moment in time, going MLG Pro, and I don't want to treat the game like I'm going MLG Pro, especially in a survival game, of, of all things. And I don't want to be where, like, Evan Angelo and Holly are considered uh, bad picks because they're melee and guns are dominant in this game. So pick Walker and Hoffman instead. Or I pick this character because I've always picked this character. And you can't change my mind because I like them. Screw you. I, I don't like that idea in my head. It's not a thing happening right now, but it's one of the things I'm very much worried about. And I really hope it doesn't happen. So please make sure the character balance is good in this game. Because I swear to God, if I'm going to end up having somebody like fight over a character like that, I, I'm literally going to scream. Alright, so the next thing that I want to end up going over is going to be the decks, or the cards in this game. The decks, or the cards, or whatever you would like to call them in this game, the perk system essentially, they need a rework. Not a full-blown rework, but there is some cards in the decks 
that are useless and some that are borderline required. Such as, in my humble opinion, I believe that in the higher difficulties, especially even on easy mode, this could be definitely a bonus. But I think that it's very much important that you have the perk or the card that gives you unlimited ammo in your pistols or your secondaries in general. I believe it's also something necessary to have the uh, card that ends up giving you an extra life for copper, especially in the later uh, rounds and difficulties where you only end up having like one life and you have no downs. I also would like to believe there's some other cards that are borderline useless, such as uh, the cards that end up having negatives. There's some cards for some reason in this game that give you negative attributes when there's cards that give you only positive attributes and there's no incentive to run the ones that give you any negative ones because there's nothing really to gain, there's only stuff to lose. And there's also some other cards as well that are just not necessary in the higher difficulties, such as the reviving cards. The reviving cards where it's like you get damaged or health upon your teammates dying or, or downing or something like that. You know, those cards don't apply to the last two modes because there is no downing. And that is unless they end up having the, uh, the card where they get an extra life due to a copper and they only are in the down state then. But unfortunately, the problem is with that is that nobody I've seen really runs that card too much. I feel like it's just me, or a lot of people just kind of just use the default deck. And I'm worried that's going to get to the point where cards are going to be out of whack. They're kind of like um, perk systems or even class systems in other games. You know, like, I, I don't want to have a meta so, so much in this game. I kind of want it to be where everything is on the same playing field, but there is obviously the better stuff to begin with. Like, in Left 4 Dead 2, for example, you don't pick, like, the silenced SMG and the mini Uzi. You want something like the MP5, or you don't pick something like the normal pump shotgun. You want either the Spaz 12, or you want the Chrome, or you want the, you know, the, the Left 4 Dead 1 full auto shoddy. You know, you want those. You obviously want the simple upgrades, but you don't want to have it be so crazy. And since there was no perks in Left 4 Dead, I just relate to the guns. But that also gets into my next topic, which also is the guns. The guns in this game have a very set of, uh, I guess you could say niches to them. The assault rifles overall around are pretty solid. I found three. I don't know if these are all of them. And, and the Alpha, I don't even know if these are all of them in the full game, but I found the AK-47, the M16, and the M4A1. And I liked them all. I didn't have a problem with any of the assault rifles. The M4A1 was my favorite. The AK was my second favorite in terms of just, like, how much I can use it. The M16 was good, but unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, you can't spawn in with you at the beginning of the game. And by the time that you go later on in the game, you're either upgrading your AK or you end up finding an M4, which is the best. And honestly, therefore, the M16 is not worth it then. Plus, also, it's burst and not full auto anymore. And I, I just don't think that the assault rifles are honestly that bad. They're overall really good. And they're one of the best guns in the game. But my favorite guns are the shotguns. There was two that I found. I found the equivalent of the classic pump shotgun on steroids. And I also found the equivalent of the chrome shotgun. Now, the pump shotgun in this game has three shots, and then you have to reload, but they end up doing one shots almost all the time. So, uh, this is one of the best guns that you can end up having in the game, especially the chrome. The chrome has eight shots by default, and one shots everything, including the special infected sometimes. And the shotguns overall, for the amount of ammo and the amount of ammo that you find and use, and just overall just the amount of, uh, I guess you say supplies for the shotgun, the attachments, the amount that you find it, the amount of ammo that you can end up using without wasting, the amount of ammo that you can find in general, the shotguns are the best guns in this game so far. I can one-shot pretty much everything without having to use too much ammo, and the consistency of how the gun works makes me want to upgrade it. The worst guns in this game is either going to come down to the sniper rifles or the LMGs. The sniper rifles and the LMGs are essentially useless. They're too slow, they they don't really give you enough bang for your buck, and the lack of ammo in this game already as it is makes those things useless. I, I found one LMG and I found one sniper. The one sniper being the M14 that Hoffman used in the trailer, and the LMG being the RPK from, like, COD. And the thing is, I used both those guns, and I, I automatically threw the sniper down as soon as I picked it up, because it was too slow, too heavy, had very poor fire rate, and honestly, I would, I would expect myself to just die picking that thing up. And then I would say also as well the RPK or the LMG. Same logic, it just happens to be a little bit better just because it's fully auto, but yes, I really do not like those. I would say that the 
Pistols are overall one of the best guns in the game right next to the assault rifles and the shotguns, especially if you have the unlimited ammo card, because everything in this game is not really about damage, it's more about DPS, because even the pistols, uh, from the very beginning all the way to the very end, will automatically one-shot if you're if you're getting headshots on a quite a regular basis on the commons, which would be, you know, the Glock or the M1911, pick, depending if you're picking Hoffman or Walker. And the thing is, is with these guns, right, is that the pistols basically are essentially like a primary in this game because of the lack of ammo on the others and just also how lack of, you know, quality they are. And I would say that overall, if you don't end up having a pistol with an assault rifle or a shotgun, you're going to be struggling. Now, if you have a melee weapon, sure, you might get by for a while, but I don't even condone the use of those. I only recommend those if you have the perks to be able to end up having it where you're always meleeing. Because you can't end up really getting benefit in this game of having a character with perks or cards that are applied for both melee and gun combat. You either just want one dedicated to just meleeing or just guns. And so, if you're going to use Holly or you're going to end up using uh, Evan Angelo, you're going to want to end up having cards dedicated to melee, because melee is a lot harder in this game than guns, because zombies can swipe you a lot easier than you can swipe them. So that's personally just one thing I would like to mention as well, and I just think that that's just something that needs to be fixed. That is just personally me. Alright, the next thing is going to be the bot AI. Oh boy, the bot AI is interesting in this game. The bot AI uh, from Left 4 Dead has definitely followed up in this game, ladies and gentlemen. It really, really has. The bots in this game are borderline unusable. The Left 4 Dead 1 bots and the Left 4 Dead 2 bots, as we all know, they are memeable. They are horrendous. They are... They are bad bots. Like, the Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 bots are not good bots. They steal a lot of the things in that game and they don't seem to really know what the emergencies are or what the you know the re relevant threats are like if i'm playing on left for dead right i would have bots try to revive me in the middle of a tank killing me or something or trying to end up reviving someone mid a uh, horde spawn or something like that that's the same thing in this game especially considering the fact that the tanks o overpower now the tank in this game as you know is not something that you can really 1v1 you kind of just need to run away and fortunately, things such as like the tunnel on Chapter 2, where the tank always spawns, and you also have circumstances where you're most likely going to go down that regard, what happens is that if you end up having a player, you know, they're going to end up trying to end up surviving and then revive you, which is the ideal thing to do. A bot, on the other hand, will see the tank, look at you, think that it's a good idea to revive you while the tank is within arm's reach of him, and he'll grab him, and then he'll throw him across the room, and essentially waste a possible life which is very, very annoying, especially considering the fact that this game is generous to you, where if you're playing with multiple people, that if you die, you can control the bots mid-game. That is fun to me. I like that, which is going to be one of the things we're going to be getting later on in with the good section. But yes, you want the bots to survive, especially since you can play as them after you die. But the thing is, though, is that they're trying to revive you mid-fight. It's not worth it. The bots are just... They're going to end up being a hindrance more than anything, and the bots need to be smarter. The bots in this game overall are a lot smarter than the Left 4 Dead ones. They do things such as use the pinging system. They will end up being a lot more friendly with how uh, you know they try to support you. They will give you med kits if they, if they see it. They will end up giving you uh, ammo, I would like to believe. I've seen people get ammo, I think. Uh, they, they end up giving you, you know, the ability to end up, I believe, even getting uh, some of the other stuff like defibs. I think that some of them will defib you because I've seen bots pick up uh, defibs and just buying workbench stuff. Either that or somebody might have end up just having a glitch. I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what's a glitch from uh, sometimes the real stuff in this game anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like honestly, like I've seen the bots be overly friendly, but the thing is though is that they still do stupid stuff like trying to revive you mid-fight, or they try to end up doing stuff such as like, you know, just walking into random just BS, or they end up falling, or uh, they, they yeah, that's especially another thing is they fall and they end up getting fall damage a lot of the time or get stuck. You know, like that's just annoying, and the bot AI really needs to be smart. They need to end up sharing more stuff with you because I feel like that the game until it gets better loot it needs to be a team based system where even the AI is sharing stuff with you because it's more important if you live anyway because if you if you die you know the game doesn't continue on so unfortunately that sucks but yes the AI in this game very much need a rework and that's honestly going to be one of my top things to be honest with you 
All right, but now coming in at the last bad thing, and this is my biggest gripe with the game, other than the glitches and the difficulty and all, because this kind of ties in with everything. It's just the way that the infected are. This game is very difficult, as I once said. Now, my biggest concern with this game in terms of its difficulty and what the glitches consist of is related to all the infected. The infected in this game are buggy, overpowered, and need a rework massively. Let's talk about the common infected first. The common infected, as I once stated, I said they go through walls, they go through the safe room, they will teleport, they can sprint uberly fast, they swipe you when you can't swipe them, they have overall just very, very annoying attributes about them. I get very frustrated when I'm trying to run away from a zombie, like for example, like let's say when I'm on the finale on the boat and I'm trying to plant the bombs. If I'm trying to run away from the zombie, I'm going to be chased by World War Z equivalent of zombies where they can climb and they can super sprint and they can grab and hug you and not let you go and they have like the, the sticky hands. These zombies in this game are relentless and they are very much very very overpowered in my regard and they need a tune down. The infected in this game need to be slower or they need to be the same speed as you. I think that this game has a very big issue with the infected balance just because of just that reason alone. It's the speed versus the damage. You are slower than the zombies. If you are running away from the zombies, eventually they will catch you because they have unlimited sprint as far as I'm aware, and you have temporary sprint. Now Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 obviously did not have sprint, so that's a different thing in this game. Now you don't need to get rid of the sprint in this game, and you also don't need to necessarily make it where you have unlimited sprint in this game. I don't mind having an occasional sprint bar and then having to catch my breath, but the zombies shouldn't be so super saiyan fast the zombies sprint like they literally sprint super saiyan style it, they they naruto run at you it, it's it's ridiculous the zombies either need to be the same speed as you either that or they need to be slower than you because being faster is a pain you need to be able to outrun the zombies especially when you're in circumstance where you're trying to run away and do the objectives or when you're low on ammo it, it's just very very annoying and they also need to end up having a lunge nerf the zombies in this game lunge. If I'm using a melee weapon, I'm out of range, they can still hit me. I've, I've practiced this. I really actually have practiced this. I have taken my melee weapon, right, and I've tried to swing at them, uh, intentionally missing, by the way, and they still hit me on that missing lunge. They seem to have double the range that I do from melee and just also just reaching speed in general. So unfortunately, what's going to end up happening a lot of the time is that if I'm in a circumstance where I'm trying to have a melee fight with zombies, they're going to always hit me double the amount of time that I'm hitting them. So unless that I have either where I'm gaining enough health back to survive or I have enough ammo to shoot them if necessary in case the last second uh, clutches need to be made, I am very much struggling. I think that this game could very much use that in that regard in terms of the zombies ru uh, running speed and its lunge uh, distance being nerfed, significantly so. And also this goes for the special infected. The special infected in this game are broken, I mean let's be honest. The tank, I'll let that slide because the tank is kind of meant to be the like the witch equivalent in this game, where like yes, the tank is something that has a massive health bar. You're only supposed to kill it if you absolutely have to. It carries over from chapter to chapter. You know that's why it has that giant health bar in the first place, and you're supposed to run from it. And that was the idea of the tank in this game to begin with. But now the boomer, the charger, the snitch, and also the hawker in this game, or in this case the hawker being the hunter or the snitch being the screamer, basically these infected all together need to be changed. Let, let's talk about them individually. Let's talk about the snitch. This is going to actually end up being the screamer that was the scrapped Left 4 Dead 1 infected that I talked about from a few videos back. I don't know if you guys ever watched that video, but I actually had a video talking about scrapped Left 4 Dead content. And that video, I talked about how that there was one special infected from back in Left 4 Dead 1 that got cut, and that was called the Screamer. And essentially, it was supposed to work like the Boomer. Basically, what they would do is that if they saw you, or you startled it, or something like that, it would end up making a loud, obnoxious scream that would be luring zombies to you, so that way they would attack, kind of like the Boomer. Now, the thing is that that was repurposed in this game. It's called the Snitch. Now, the snitch in this game does the exact same thing. The snitch, if you shoot it, or if you end up scaring it, 
it's going to end up alerting infected and they're going to attack you. Now the problem is with the snitch, the snitch, first of all, it looks like a common infected. So if I'm down range, I can't tell whether or not that that's a snitch and to know whether or not to shoot it. Because like, let's take once again, chapter two, if you play chapter two and you end up having that long line of sight, the very, very beginning before the tunnel, or even in the tunnel to begin with, if you end up having it where you end up shooting a, a horde of zombies, you can accidentally shoot the snitch pretty damn easily. The snitch is like a normal zombie with an extra long neck. It, when, when you look at one, it's got a extra long red, like a distended neck. And other than that, it looks like a common infected. And the problem is that you can't kill it before it like screams or something. Kind of like how the boomer, you could blow it up before it vomited or something. No, the snitch, if you end up shooting it or if it ends up getting startled at all, it's going to scream and you can't kill it fast enough for it. It can actually alert anything. So the only way you can avoid the snitch is to just literally avoid it. But sometimes he's in circumstances where you can't avoid him. You have to either walk near him or you gotta shoot him. So essentially, you're screwed. And the snitch in this game is very, very difficult to counter because I feel like I can't do anything about it. The snitch needs to at least make it where if you shoot enough lead into him, he will die before he scares you know any zombies to you. I need to be able to kill this thing. Because if I can't kill the thing, and I can't avoid the thing, I'm essentially screwed. Either let the let me kill the thing if I shoot enough lead into it, or make it where he's not so scared easily. Because that is the biggest issue with that infected. It really needs to be changed. Now the next one that I want to go over is the hawker, or the hunter in this game. The only big gripe that I have with him is that he looks too much like a common infected. Unless he is pouncing on the walls, or unless he is making his distinct chittering noise... I can't exactly tell him apart because he's the same size and kind of looks the same as any other generic infected and I think that he needs to look a little bit different or he needs to have something like, in fact I th honestly think every infected in this game needs this so I'll just mention it now. I think all the special infected in this game need classic music. Kind of like how in Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 they had classic music. You know, you know, the ch charger, the hunter, the smoker, everything would have distinct music and noises where if they were near you, you knew they were near you. In this game, the only real one that has a distinct music is the tank, and the only real infected that have a distinct noise is kind of the uh, the the you know the the hunter in this game or the hawker because he makes that chittering sound. But the snitch, he doesn't make a noise until he screams, so it's kind of too late in that regard. He needs a preemptive scream or a noise rather or music even. And same thing with the Charger and the Boomer and all that. They don't have any music, so you just get jump-scared by them. And that's inconvenient to the, the fullest extent, is because I have no idea whether I'm walking into a trap, essentially, or not. I really would hope that by the time that the beta comes around, that there's distinct music. Because it's also iconic, as, as it is to begin with. So I would love to have distinct music for those infected, and I would also like to have it where those infected that I already listed get changes. Now let's talk about the Boomer. The boomer or the the, uh, the wrench in this game, this guy has extreme lunge with his vomit. The boomer got a big buff, uh, big, big boy buff. He got a big boy buff. Now, he doesn't explode instantly from like one bullet essentially, like he did used. To, you know, he used to. Yep, you have to lay a couple shots into him. And his vomit has now got damage potential where when he vomits on you. It not only blurs you for a little bit, but he also ends up having it where it lays on the ground like a Molotov or like spitter goo. And he also ends up having it where it does damage to you in general, like as he's hitting you from a super far distance. We're talking about like a smoker sniper shot on steroids. Like this guy has the ability to literally vomit on you from one end of the boat finale to the other end and has no problem. And he's accurate as hell. So, the boomer, like, you could be trick-shotted by this guy, and it's very, very annoying. He needs to be able to not shoot you from a sniper rifle equivalent distance. I need to be able to shoot him before he's able to do that, at least. So, make it where his bomb is cut, like, in half. It shouldn't be able to reach across the map. And also make it where the damage is either lowered or where it's not on the floor afterward. I don't mind having it where it burns me on direct shots, and I also don't mind it being on the ground, but I don't want both, and I don't want it to be to the extent that it was. So that's honestly what I would like to uh, list. Now, I also would like to mention my least favorite is Special Infected in this game, which is going to be the Tall Boy, the Charger, or the Bruiser, or whatever you'd like to call him. He is the most overpowered Infected in this whole entire game. 
The Charger is the most broken infected in all of this game. He has no music, so you don't know where he's coming, but he even knows where you're coming. And the infected in this game are very tough where they know flank routes that I didn't even know existed. And unfortunately, there is no indication whether or not this guy is going to run at you or swing at you. Basically, he will shuffle towards you and look like he's walking, and you have no idea whether or not that he's about to sprint. So you have to always be retreating back and always keep a significant amount of range to uh, from him that you don't necessarily need or shouldn't even have. And it's frustrating to that because sometimes I can't seem to get enough range from him to where I can shoot him. I can't seem to train around him because if I, if I get close enough to him, he'll just smack me. But if I'm far enough and I have a line of sight on him, he'll run at me. And so the only thing that I can do that will reasonably kill him is if I hope I'm in an area where he spawns that I'm able to have a straight line of sight where I can shoot him but far enough away that he can't hit me. Because if I'm too close at all, he will destroy me. He has the ability to run, and I have no idea he's about to do it. He has the ability to swing, essentially, right after every swing that he does as soon as you're next to him. Like, if I'm next to him and he swings, he's ready to swing again, and he does a lot of damage. And he just has a crap ton of health. Like, why has the Charger got the equivalent of tank health in this game? Like, the original tank. I swear to God, he does not die. And it's very, very annoying. And, like, I'm not even necessarily mad at the developers for buffing the infected. It's been a while, and we obviously need a challenge. But don't make it borderline impossible, especially for the newcomers. I don't want to necessarily make this game noob-friendly to the point where it gets boring or it's, like, modern warfare logic. But, like, I don't want it to be where, like, I can't end up playing with my friends because they get raged, you know, enraged by playing this game. Like, I want to be able to play this with Jake and Joseph and Murray and all those guys. And this game's too sweaty where the AI are, like, trickshotting them. They're not going to want to play. And then it's just going to be, like, me or something. And I want to be able to play this game with my friends just kind of matter-of-factly, you know? That was, that's the whole entire idea why I was looking forward to this. So that's pretty much all my biggest gripes, and I tried to condense them in a small enough fashion, and they still ended up being like 40 minutes long. Now let's go on to the stuff I do like to wrap up the video. So what I do like is the atmosphere, first of all. This game has an extremely good atmosphere, and this game feels like Left 4 Dead. I know that there are some people that don't call this Left 4 Dead, and I, I inter-exchange that word or that term a lot. Because it's by the same developers, and it feels very much like Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead and this game are very, very, very similar. It's basically the equivalent of if you had a stepfather. Left 4 Dead was, sure, maybe your biological dad, but Back 4 Blood is so damn close, and a pretty good stepdad, as in a step game in this case. It's it's so similar and has all the good aspects, and has little to no flaws, to the point where like it's, it's basically Left 4 Dead, or basically your stepdad. Now... That's what I like to think about it, and I really do like the atmosphere about this game, and I honestly think that that's one of my favorite attributes, and I really, really do like it. It's scary, it's got a comedic value at the same time, it's fun, and it's very much enjoyable. Next is the characters. I am very much satisfied and very, very happy with this crew. I don't know about the other characters that are going to be later coming out, but the default four that we have being Evan Angelo, Holly, Walker and also Hoffman are very likable and I enjoy them a lot. I see Evan Angelo as like the Ellis equivalent. I see Holly as like the Zoe equivalent. I see Walker as like the coach equivalent. And I kind of see Hoffman kind of like a Lewis equivalent. Now, some people like those characters and some people do not. And these guys are original enough that they're not 100% carbon copies, trust me. But they have the likable attributes of those characters. I say this because Evan Angelo is very witty and fun like Ellis. Very witty, upbeat humor, and overall very positive character and just likable to be around. Holly has got that kind of like dorky cute badass that Zoe did. Where Zoe, like, we, we liked her because she was a badass... But she was only a badass because of the way she was and how her character was constructed. And there's not, you're not really able to replicate that to the fullest extent. It's not 100% Zoe with Holly, but I sense that in her. I, I don't, I don't want to compare her 100% to Zoe because she's not similar enough to Zoe to really say like a carbon copy or like a inspiration from her. Holly, I just relates to Zoe because it's the easiest thing to do. But Holly is just her own type of you know badass female character where she's funny and witty in her own regard as well, but her character is predominantly that just that snarky, 
but kind of like cutesy, flirty at the exact same time girl character, and that makes her fun to play as and also to be around. Next is going to be Walker. Walker is just the generic, most stereotypical version of a badass black guy. He is your Morgan Freeman or your Samuel L. Jackson equivalent badass black guy. You know, he's got a whole bunch of awesome badass quotes. He is very, very cool the way that he looks. I like his character kit overall in general. It fits his character and his personality. I can I, I can see a lot of people gravitating to him because he's like Coach, or he's uh, almost like the like I said the equivalent of you know your Samuel L. Jackson to real life equivalent character, and he's very fun and I enjoy playing as Walker and even Hoffman. Hoffman is my least favorite character this game, but Hoffman's honestly not that bad. Hoffman is not a Rochelle. And he's obviously not going to be a Ellis or a Zoe, but he's decent. Hoffman is the nerdy, dorky character of this game. And some people will gravitate towards that because they can relate. And some people also just like that in general. Hoffman, funnily enough, looks like Stuhlinger from Black Ops 2 Zombies, which I think is kind of funny. Zach and me both caught on to that. But yes, uh, Hoffman in this game, he is... Not the best in terms of his quotes, but he's got a couple funny snarky one-liners that makes him at least okay. He's like Eugene from The Walking Dead in the uh, Left 4 Dead equivalent. Like, he's very much like Eugene from The Walking Dead if he was in Left 4 Dead. It, it, it literally is the equivalent of him. He's got the dorky glasses, has really cringy jokes as much as he's got his uh, so occasional uh, okay one-liners, and he's not fully dorky, but he's, he's pretty damn dorky. He, he's, he's just a dork. He's a dorky character that has his moments, and I like that. And he's not boring with his quotes. Like, I mean, his quotes are cringy, to say the least, but they're fun. They're, they're, they're enjoyable. They're a different tit-for-tat or a nice flavor of variety. And I honestly haven't seen a character that would fully relate to Hoffman. Hoffman is one of the most unique, unique characters that I've seen in a while, and I hope that the other four characters are as much as an enjoyment to play as and even be around like the original first four. The first four are very promising, and I hope that Mom, which is one of the characters that were leaked, and also the others, I hope they're enjoyable to play. Alright, the next thing is going to end up being the story. I love how that this game ends up having a story other than the characters. The characters have, yes, their quotes and their backstory from what they say and what they do and how they look, and you can put two and two together, and you can kind of do, you know, your Sherlock Holmes equivalent of the storytelling. But I enjoy how that in this game, they're very, very prevalent on the storytelling, such as even things with the trailer with the worm, showing how the virus started and how it, you know, evolved and how, you know, in the campaign, we're trying to save people and the military's here. We get other side characters that happen throughout the campaigns. I enjoy that and I like how there's a, almost like a cinematic movie effect. Like, I feel like when the other acts or the other campaigns come out, eventually we're going to end up having a revelation to the point where it's going to be like a movie. It's going to be like, oh, damn, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm also hoping that maybe we can start implementing cutscenes because I'm hoping that that's the case because when we end up loading into the alpha, every single time when we would end up loading in, we would end up getting something like a, a you know, the, the, the alpha trailer over and over again being like welcome to the back for blood alpha and it's just it kind of got repetitive after a while i would like to end up having it where there's like a cutscene, you know even if it's like one cutscene, it just kind of repeats on end but like imagine if like i i especially wish that left 4 dead 1 and 2 did this but imagine if left 4 dead 1 and 2 you know their trailers uh were overlaid on the campaign imagine if the no mercy map had the trailer from the release of Left 4 Dead 1. Remember when all of our characters had that long ass cutscene when like Left 4 Dead 1 got first revealed and Zoe and Bill went to the room with the witch and Lewis started shooting at the door freaking out and they had to run up the roof seeing the tank for the first time. Imagine if that was a cutscene that always played when you load up No Mercy, you know what I mean? Can you imagine how fun that would be? I would love if they had their own custom cutscenes in Back for Blood per map because that would just be very fun to me and I would honestly really like that, especially since we're only in the alpha stage. Alright, the next thing is going to end up being the innovation. The innovation in this game is very well done. I honestly overall really like what they did, especially with things such as the upgrade bench. I love how that I can upgrade my stuff and almost have a progression system in this game now. And don't feel like once I get like one loadout, I'm basically set other than like occasionally running out of ammo or just getting bored with what I got. I enjoy how I'm grinding for stuff. 
I enjoy the fact that there is that Left 4 Dead 1 flavor of stuff, like, you know, such as uh, panic events and the safe room and stuff like that being back in chapter uh, equivalent campaigns. But I enjoy the types of panic events or the chapters or the the vibe on the map that we have because it's all stuff that we haven't really seen before, but it's familiar enough that's fun. I enjoy the location that we're taking place on the map. I enjoy the finale of the of the uh, campaign, how we're actually like working with the military to blow up a boat. We have to we have to go back to the finale that we just end up starting, and we have to complete an objective. You know, by blowing up the the uh, the, uh, the boat on our own. That that's just cool to me. I enjoy the innovation of this game, and I honestly think it's one of my favorite things. And one of the things that they innovated, which leads me into my next thing that I honestly made separate, is pinging. Oh my god, the pinging in this game is such an amazing thing, because if somebody doesn't have a microphone for whatever reason, or they don't feel like typing, they can end up having it where they can ping. You press Q on the keyboard, and you can ping anything on the map. And you can even ping stuff, even if you can talk or can type, because some things you can't see. You can be like, I see a, uh, you know, a snitch or a screamer over there. I see a uh, AK over here. I see uh, ammo over here. I see that there's a horde over here. And you can be so communicative and don't really have to think. And I enjoy that, and I honestly think it's one of my favorite things. Now we're going to be going over to the Upgrade Bench. The Upgrade Bench is one of my overall favorite things about this game. I enjoy very much the Upgrade Bench. The Upgrade Bench allows you to have a sense of progression in this game. So, let's talk about that. So, every single safe room now in this game, making it so that way there's four Upgrade Benches. Basically, what these do is that with the copper that you find lying around the map, allows you to be able to progress your character, such as being able to buy attachments for your gun, such as... Uh, different clips, different barrel attachments, uh, optic sights, a stock. Uh, you can also end up buying all ammo across every single thing, even though if you don't have that gun, you can end up buying uh, health you know, kits. You can buy pain pills. You can buy band-aids. You can buy a defibrillator. You can end up buying a tool kit. You can buy uh, you know, all the grenades. You can end up being able to fly out by uh, direct health. You can just heal your character up immediately without needing necessarily use a med kit. So that way you don't have to like worry about using a layer. Just be like, I want to heal now for cheaper. You know, you can do that. And I enjoy that because like it makes me have a grinding incentive. Because I don't want to be where like I'm just constantly using one gun throughout the whole entire game. Like, for example, I could be like, oh yeah, I'll just use my AK. But no, it's like, I'll use my AK and then I'll eventually get a stock. And I'll get a fast mag and I'll get a, a, like a laser sight. You know, and stuff like that. And I keep upgrading and it makes it very fun. Plus also it allows you to buy ammo if you can't find any ammo. And I enjoy that very much so. It's like 50 copper for ammo, and ammo is like one of my things that I almost always buy. And I very much enjoy that, I think that's honestly very fun. Uh, next is going to be the Easter eggs. The Easter eggs in this game, I only found one that was, stood out to me, and that was the Left 4 Dead uh, 2 Easter egg, where they were coding Quoach on the finale on a sticky note. I made a video about this also as well. And I personally think that this is a very good step in the right direction for Easter egg content, and I very much want to continue to see that in the future, and I hope that is the case. Uh, the next thing is the scare factor. I really end up enjoying the scare factor in this game. I definitely end up having a eerie Left 4 Dead 1 vibe more than a comedic Left 4 Dead 2 vibe when I play this game. It's gory, it's gruesome, and I love it. And I enjoy that about this game. I feel like I am in Left 4 Dead 1 again when I first played it. Because sometimes I'll be around the corner and I'll be like, Oh crap, there's a giant whore that's going to swallow me alive. We're on the last one alive. This is so intense. I have 1 HP. Oh my god, I'm going to die. And that that's cool to me and I enjoy that. And I love the eeriness vibe. Now as I've gotten older, obviously this you know stuff doesn't scare me too, too much anymore. But I've had my moments and I definitely feel like someone that's young getting into this for the first time might have that as well. So I hope that's the case for somebody else one day. Next is going to be the graphics. Graphics on the PC portion, at least, were very, very nice. I enjoyed running it at the max graphics, but I also did enjoy running it at the lowest graphics. The lowest graphics, honestly, were not that bad. The only thing I'm just concerned about for this game is the game not running the most optimally because they're trying to also make it for last gen, being the PS4 and the Xbox One, and I don't want to have a cyberpunk equivalent of this game being out on store shelves. And I also don't want the PC or even the Xbox Series X and S or the PS5 to suffer because they're trying to do last-gen hardware. So the graphics are promising for the way they are. I love the amount of blood on the screen. I love the amount of like just graphic capability that this game has, minus the occasional texture glitches, such as on the first chapter where if you look at the roof, there's black spots, you know, like constantly on the screen dripping down. 
But I, I honestly think the graphics are definitely a good step in the right direction. I overall really like them. And then the last thing is going to be the map. The map, other than the exception of Chapter 2, is very well done. I enjoy the first chapter. It's easy, it's simple, straight to the point, welcomes you to the game. The next thing that I end up liking is Chapter 3. Chapter 3, I enjoy the vibe, I enjoy the fact that there's dialogue that's set on every single chapter. I enjoy uh, on the finale. The finale is one of my favorites because if you can get to the finale, there's a lot of rewarding stuff such as the Easter eggs and just also just the way the finale is done. The finale is so fun once you get used to it after a while. Being able to run on the bridge towards the yachts and get into the military reminds me a lot of the Parish ending. And then trying to go back on the boat and trying to blow it up teamwork style and then try to get back to the military on the other side of the bridge again reinvokes that and there's a lot more intensity because there's that countdown of a minute and you could die trying to complete the objective it's just very intense and that's rejuvenating for me very very much so and i enjoy that because even though there's things such as you know the crows and the snitch and the special infected always surrounding me and and i really wish that they be fixed especially the crows oh my god there's too many crows in this game uh, but but also the lack of ammo and just also the other stuff getting away. Once you get to that finale, man, it's all the worth it. That finale is so nice. And I probably would say that the finale of Back for Blood is so promising that I would definitely put it in my top few finales in general of the Left 4 Dead uh, like franchise. Because some finales in Left 4 Dead get repetitive after a while. And there's not a given bad finale I can really think of in Left 4 Dead. But I would say that it's very promising for after 10 years to have that type of finale that we had in Back for Blood. It was very, very well done, and I just in general loved it so much. But yes, guys, this is going to end up being today's video. It was a nice hour-long video of just fun stuff to talk about and criticisms overall in general. I hope you guys ended up enjoying. If you did, as always, I would tremendously appreciate if you guys could drop a like comment subscribe all that wonderful stuff because that will be able to let you tell me and youtube that you want to see more videos like this and i hope you guys enjoyed another youtube video for the most unique youtuber you were ever going to see peace out guys